when we put together a query, one of the things we have to think about is not only what words we use, but also what order we put those words in the query. So if you're making your query, say, three, four, or five words, do you just put them in in any old order you can think of, or do you want to actually sort of preserve word phrases and so on? That's what we're going to talk about now. Every word in your query matters. Even the word order can make a difference. So let's compare a few results. If we do a query like who, you get the World Health Organization as the very first result. That kind of makes sense. That's the most obvious, the most common, the most linked to organization or web page that has the word who in the title. It's throughout the document. That makes a lot of sense. Now, let's add a single word to the front of that. Let's add a who. The article a added to the front suggests a whole different kind of set of results. In this case, we see the IMDb result for Horton. Here's a who. This is a Theodore uh, Geisel, Dr. Seuss uh, uh, movie. And you can see that makes a lot of sense as well. So even little tiny words like a single particle for a uh, in front of a word will make a big difference. I'll give you another example. Suppose it's not a who, but the who. Again, the meaning of this changes a lot. And so in this case, little words that would you normally would think about as stop words or words that might be extra turn out to make a big difference in those results. The very top results for all three of those queries, who, a who, and the who, are very, very different. So pay attention. The words that come in phrases, in natural phrases like that, a who, the who, and so on, make a big difference in the kind of search results you're going to get back. I'll give you another example here. Word order ends up mattering. Let's take an example like blue sky or sky blue. Does it make a difference which order you put? Well, here are the top two results for the query sky blue. In this case, we're getting a science website that talks about why is the sky blue. And the second result is something about credit and so on. Now, if you switch the order of those two words to blue sky, you'll see you get the blue sky studios, a very different set of results. You see my point? Word order matters. The way in which you put the terms of your query can make a huge difference. Let me give you one more example. Continuing again in that theme of, of uh, colors, let's do something like black and white. You can see the very top results here, the very top organic result, is for the video game black and white. So that's a game developed in 2001 a while ago. But let's reverse those terms here. And I'll say white and black. And now we get the White House black market, a very different set of results for what look like exactly the same words. So the key idea here is that word order, little words matter. The thing to take away here is that your word choice matters. The word order matters. The use of small words that occur in common phrases like the name of a rock and roll band or the name of a movie make a difference in the kind of search results you're going to get. So when you're trying to formulate a query, think about not only what words to include, but the order in which they naturally come. If it's a natural sequence to you, it's probably the right term to use in a sequence for your query. A lot of people think that Google pays a lot of attention to the details of words, like the capitalization, things like that. Truth is, misspellings, capitalizations, special characters, doesn't really matter all that much. This in particular case, these don't matter. Let me give you some nice examples of that. In this case, capitalization, if I spell it red delicious with a capital D, or if I make every other letter a capital, it doesn't matter. The results will be exactly the same. What Google does, basically, is take each of your search terms in your query and ignore the case. So case really doesn't matter. Another thing to know that doesn't matter are a lot of the special characters that you might want to put into a query. So for example, the section symbol or the paragraph symbol the yen symbol, the pound symbol, the euro symbol, and all those kinds of special characters don't get used when you, conf when you make your Google query. They're just basically dropped on the floor. So when you do a search for, say, the copyright symbol 2010, you're actually searching for just 2010. It's important to know that because I don't want you to be fooled by results that work, but work for reasons you didn't really anticipate. A few characters do make a difference when you're doing a search. So for example, C++ 
uses the special symbols plus plus as a single entity because C++ is a language that's used a lot by computer programmers everywhere. We use it a lot at Google. C followed by the sharp sign or the hash symbol is also another programming language that's used widely. So we recognize that when you search for C sharp. If we put that sharp sign or the hash character before a word, as you see here with hash hashtag, then that searches through the hashtags that are available on the web. Let me give you a quick, quick example of that. So if I did a search for sharp Google like that, you'll see that the search results have all kinds of interesting results that include the hashtag just for hash Google. Similarly, the special character plus, when it's put in front of a term, like a company name or a person's name, will search through G plus our social network, search through the G plus space for something like that. Let me give you an example again with plus Google. So I'll change this hash symbol here to plus Google. And you'll see here is it takes us immediately to the G plus, G plus search space. In this case, the company page for all of Google. You get the idea. Plus in front of a name or a company will give you the G plus version of that result. You can also put a dollar sign in front of a number to search for a price, or an at sign in front, of, in front of a person's name or handle in order to search for people on, say, various social network streams. So that's another way we can get access and search for people throughout the, the web and internet space. Lastly, if you put the percent symbol after a number, you can search for values which have that attached to the very end. This way, you can use all these special characters to search. But note, it doesn't generalize. You can't put percent, percent, 45 percent. It really throws away the first two and only searches for the percent that follows the number. This way, you can search for all kinds of stuff. There's one other thing you really have to know. Google is extremely good about fixing your spelling errors. Turns out that some names are just harder to spell than others. Britney Spears is a great case in point. So if I go to Google and I search for something like Brittany with three T's, Spears, look at that. It finds it and actually gives you the correction. That's what's showing right here, showing results for Brittany Spears spelled correctly. Now, you still have the option. This says search instead for Brittany with three T's. And if for some reason you have a friend who spells it with three T's, you can actually find her that way. Keep in mind, the Google Spelling Correction algorithm is extremely good and often will help you out in tremendous ways. And so the thing to take away here is that most special characters are ignored, but there are a couple ones that you have to pay attention to. Capitalization doesn't matter. Now think about that next time you do a query where you're trying to use the names of products or you're using names or terms with special accents or special characters. We can mostly ignore those and you'll get the right results in any case.